Welcome to our show, News, Reviews, and Booze. This week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for creating your professional website or portfolio. If you'd like 10% off, go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code photo reviews. Photo news. Photo news. <laughs> Do not try the other one. Squarespace.com slash Tony photo news. Okay. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace, yeah. making this possible. Yeah. So we can uh, let's go to jump our, right into the news. Yeah, our first segment is called The Scoop, where we give you the scoop on the latest photography news. Tony, what'd you dig up? Uh, you know, minor thing, but the Magic Lantern team came out with a new nightly build for the 5D Mark III that actually extends the dynamic range of the camera by half a stop. The 5D Mark III already had like a better dynamic range than just about any camera out there, and it added an extra half a stop, which is like 7% more. So it's not gonna rock your world or anything, but it's incrementally a little bit better, lets you squeeze a little bit more out of those raw files. Uh, means you won't have to bracket and go to HDR quite as often. You won't blow out your highlights quite as much. And as far as I can tell, there's no penalty to it at all. Once you get that Magic Lantern installed, it just, just gathers the information from the sensor a little bit more efficiently. Um, I, if you have a Canon camera, a DSLR, definitely check out Magic Lantern. It has a lot of cool features in it. It's free and you know has things like unlimited bulb timer, so you can run a five minute exposure on your camera without a remote shutter trigger. It has an intervalometer built into it. We use it on the 5D Mark II over there, camera number one, to automatically restart recording after the normal 10 minute limit, so we can just record on and on and on because these segments go on pretty long. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's one of the best benefits of using Canon cameras because it just doesn't exist for other types of cameras, but go check it out and uh, squeeze a little bit more out of your Mark III. The independent JPEG group is coming out with a new version of the JPEG 9.1. Some features it's gonna have is better compression and 12-bit color instead of 8-bit. Uh, what, what city is that organization in, Charles? Leipzig. <laughs> <laughs> None of us know how to pronounce that Leipzig. name, so that could be right or not. Leipzig. Yeah, JPEG is this really old standard. It's been around forever. When the rest of the world has been moving on, we still use the standard for our pictures that was around like when we use cassette tapes and stuff. And it's the it, compression is completely inefficient. We could squeeze our pictures down so much more. We could pretty much completely get rid of all those stupid artifacts that you're always dealing with. But it's so hard to replace it because it's just pervasive. Every server, every camera, every image processing software, all of your browsers uh, all understand this old JPEG standard and getting all of these standards to all of these clients to update and understand the new standard is gonna be a, a big thing. JPEG 2000 came out in the year 2000, and you probably never heard of it, right? Because nobody ever uses it. No, we just never bothered to upgrade to that much better version. So here's another new version. I hope we actually adopt this one. I think that it sounds useful. It's definitely useful. Just getting everybody to use it is the hard part. I'll use it. I'm gonna be an early adapter. <laughs> the Empire State Building in New York, you know, the one with like King Kong is suing a photographer for more than a million dollars for a commercial picture that he took there of a topless gal. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. The picture doesn't look good to me. He says it was taken with a cell phone, so it's not exactly a commercial picture, but I don't know why he had a gal up there with her top off. Sex sells. I think we'd get more views if I took my top off or if you took yours off for that matter. Uh, I'm willing to do it. We need the <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> I don't think anybody's asking for it really. <laughs> Um, I do think it brought up an interesting point about intellectual property rights as photographers. You know, you can, if you're a casual photographer and you're just putting things up on Facebook or even your portfolio, you can pretty much take a picture of anything and anybody and you'll probably never run into any problems because um, at least in America, somebody would have to notice that you were taking, using a picture of them without their permission and then sue you for some sort of damage. It is different in different countries though. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not a lawyer. Um, but this same kind of thing extends to property and a lot of public buildings don't have any intellectual property protection So you could go take a picture down the street and you probably wouldn't run into any problem But especially inside of buildings that's often considered uh, Private property and you can't necessarily use the images um, But also the exteriors of some buildings do have some sort of intellectual property protection um, The Empire State Building is pretty old so I bet the outside of it you can just use freely but they still have some rights over the inside and you can't hold a commercial shoot inside the Empire State Building without getting permission from them. Um, I also say New York City in general makes it really difficult. You have to like work with the police 
and get a permit if you want to do even like a portrait shoot or a wedding shoot in Central Park. And the cops will come and shut you down if you look like anything more than an amateur. It can be really difficult. So I think that's what this lawsuit is more about. But of course, having a topless gal in it makes it a little more enticing. It's a spicy story. Yeah. Um, minor interesting point about the Eiffel Tower. You can take pictures of the Eiffel Tower and sell them. We do all the time. Some, some of our more popular commercial work. You can take pictures of the Eiffel Tower with the lights on and sell them. No problem. Yep. But if you take a picture when the light show is going, they do this kind of animated show that's just beautiful at night. Well, somebody developed that fairly recently and the artist who created it owns the intellectual property. And if you try to take a picture or video of the light show, they will sue you and they have sued a lot of people. So it's kind of a fine line. So we sell night pictures of the Eiffel Tower, but not when the light show is on because we would get sued. And we're not that brave. <laughs> I have some really exciting news. We are about to hit 100,000 subscribers. So if you want to help us out, tell your friends, tell your family, tell strangers in passing, tell everyone to check out our channel. You can share our videos and subscribe. And even if you have enemies and you don't like our channel, you could tell them. You could yeah, tell them the well, whole that'll thing. teach them. That'll teach them. <laughs> More news about us. New version of Stunning Digital Photography is out. We're adding an hour of video. We're up to over seven hours. Seven hours. We've got quizzes now online at the end of every chapter. More than a hundred practice test questions in it. And we added some sections that our readers asked us to add because we update it on request and we do what you want. Yeah, we added a lot of new pages to this. The page count is actually the same, but we did that to keep cost and weight down. Um, but we took out things like the checklist. I originally put checklists in here that I imagine people tearing or cutting out, but nobody wanted to cut up their books. Yeah. <laughs> so they wanted to download it. So now you just go and you download the checklist. But I used those pages and filled them with new content. I Also, I added an index by popular demand. So many people ask for an index. So now I combined a glossary and index. And if you look up term, you'll see it has actual page numbers. So you can use that to quickly flip to where you're going. Yeah. If you have the previous edition, um, we're going to put up a way that you can kind of trade it in or upgrade for a lower price. So stay tuned. For yeah, that. assuming you've registered, taken a picture of the book, and emailed it to Sony at northrop.org, you'll get an email from me soon with a coupon code. If you don't have it, grab it at Amazon or SDP Community. Uh, you want to give them a coupon code? New book? What do you think? 20% off? New book? No. <laughs> no, no, okay. SDP, New book. Only if you get it from stpcommunity.com. Um, yeah. But yeah, you just can get it from Amazon or wherever too if you're an Amazon person. One of our readers has been in the news. Uh, Alison Brimecombe over in Australia has been uh, giving, she, she does portrait photography, especially family portrait photography, and she's fantastic at baby pictures. So she's been giving them lemons. <laughs> you, you cruel woman. Yeah, we totally support being mean to kids for good pictures. <laughs> We're anyway. just teasing Allison. The pictures are beautiful. They They're get a really great cute. reaction yeah. from the kids. Yeah, yeah they, they just make them really, really adorable. Uh, so go ahead and uh, check out her portfolio and the news story. Yeah. Our next segment is Fit Chat, where we answer your questions that you ask us on YouTube. So, Tony, um, let me ask you the first one. Are Tony and Chelsea partners or siblings? Ah, uh, well, we're married and half siblings. That's okay, right? We just have the same mom. <laughs> no, we don't. We're cousins. All right. First cousins. <laughs> Here is our next question from Tom TNT83. I like the sound of that one. Sounds dangerous. How can I send you my photo? Uh, well, uh, the photo review is open to people who've purchased stunning digital photography or our DVD training series. So if you don't like books, just get the DVD training series. And then uh, you can upload it at sdpcommunity.com under the pictures menu. You'll see a little sub menu there. Yeah, that's how we review all of our pictures from our readers. The ebook is $9.99 though. It's $9 for a book and seven hours of video and quizzes and an online community and photo re review. I mean, a bargain. We should probably make that more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Here is our last question from Javier. I've decided to learn 
something this morning and I just get it with a big smile. Well done. This is my idea of learning. Chelsea should be the education minister or something. I agree. I just wanted to share that one. It's not even a question. I agree. It's not even a question. I just wanted to say, Javier, you're right. I should be. <laughs> I'm really good at this. And I'm going to go for that job. So thank you. Oh, look. Jane82 says... Tony, you're the best. You're so handsome, and you're the best photography teacher in the world. That doesn't and even say I anything like that. I hope my kids grow up to be just like you, and I really admire you, and I bought all your stuff. No, nope, that's not even true. <laughs> all right. What's next, Tony? That ends chit-chat. Chit-chat is over. Hey, viewers, now it's time that we ask a question for you. Ask the viewer. We are going to be exploring the mirrorless segment soon here. We've always been DSLR people because that's just our background with commercial photography. It's pretty much all big DSLRs. Um, but I know so many people are using mirrorless cameras and they just rave about them. Uh, Trey Ratcliffe recently switched from DSLRs to the Sony NEX system. And so I've been looking deeply into this and I played with just about all the mirrorless cameras, but I want to actually live with one for a while and try it out. And I'm wondering which one because the segment is so divided. There are so many great cameras from different manufacturers, but the lens systems are all separated and it gets to be really confusing. Olympus, Panasonic, Fuji, Sony, and then Nikon and camera have their offerings. Um, right now, I'm looking at the, uh, the full frame Sony mirrorless, the A7 and the A7R, which I think are exciting because I could just stick an adapter and use all my Canon lenses if I wanted to. Uh, I also really like the NEX system for being like compact and modern and again with an adapter I could use my existing lenses and my FD lenses and stuff. They'd be a little cropped because it's just a little bit smaller sensor. I also like the Fuji X-E2 and the Olympus OM-D M1 looks terribly, terribly cool, completely weatherproof, looks indestructible, but I'm worried about that micro four, four thirds sensor. It's so small and also OMD M1 is like more expensive than a full frame SLR. You could spend over two grand for that and, and a kit lens. What's your question? Are which we gonna... one should I get? What do you think? Are we gonna... Which mirrorless camera do you love? Why is it better? I guess these are a lot of questions. Can we have yours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically you guys know us. What, what, what system and which body and lens, lenses do you think we should start with? There's gonna be a fight over this. <laughs> a real messy fight. Yeah, these mirrorless people are passionate and they're tired of and being violent. in the back seat. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I also wanted to discuss kind of a featured photographer because I have so many photographers that are, are just my idols and influences. Um, <laughs> I think the first one that I wanna talk about is David LaChapaldo and he's a photographer that You've probably seen his work somewhere, but not a lot of people know about him. Um, and like us, he was a commercial photographer for a long time, but then he went into this really just fascinating fine art kind of pulp, pulp culture photography um, using just a lot of celebrities. And uh, he has a particular style that is just completely commanding and controversial. And you, I, I know that I take pictures and I often think of the style of his work and it's hard to achieve. But he makes these pictures with A-list celebrities and like six-figure budgets. He uses like a massive team. Um, very little post-processing. Almost everything is done in camera. But his work, you should definitely go ahead and check it out. He is one of my heroes and just a master overall. So now we're moving on to the reviews and booze segment of the show. Uh, we're going to look over your pictures. And also, we're going to start taking some recommendations for drinks that we should have while we're reviewing the photos. Yeah, tell us what to drink. Yeah. We'll give it a try. Give us a recipe. We want to try it. This segment is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Once again, check it out, squarespace.com backslash Tony. Photo news or reviews? <laughs> Photo reviews. The photo news. That's the that's the code. I'm in the process of uh, setting up my Squarespace portfolio right now. Actually, I saw yours and got a little bit jealous. So I started it, not done yet. I'll have to put it up, but it looks easy and the designs are really beautiful. Actually, I was surprised by how good it looks. 
Yeah, I've been so happy with my uh, having my portfolio at Squarespace. It has this full store integrated so I can sell either digital images or prints to people right away. Yeah. In fact, it's good for just about any type of store. You could sell your own crafts there if you wanted to. Uh, and it takes only a couple of minutes to even hook up the e-commerce part of it so you can get payments just right away. And I can't emphasize enough how easy it is. You don't have to be a nerd. You don't even have to have a nerdy friend to set up the website. If you can run Lightroom, Squarespace is gonna be a breeze. It's easier it than is. Adobe products. Really like, <laughs> no, no, it's not saying a lot. Drag and drop and just self-explanatory. It really walks you through the process. Plus they have 24 seven support. Yeah, and I, it was user error, but I screwed some stuff up and I opened up a support ticket and they got back to me um, within an hour. Uh, the second time it was like just a shy, just a hair over an hour and it was just email. I didn't have to call and wait on hold or anything. I just fired off a question and they got right back to me, fixed my problem even though it was my fault <laughs> right away. Anyway, they have excellent support. Uh, you can get a free trial, no credit card required. Um, and then you can get a discount if you decide to sign up by using the promo code PHOTONEWS. Uh, so just go to squarespace.com slash Tony and you can set up a beautiful portfolio or just about any other type of website that you might imagine with no technical skills. And if you run into problems, they are there to help. Oh, I love Squarespace, not just because they're sponsoring us. I loved it before then. They're a great deal. Yeah, we're lucky we get to be sponsored by something that we actually like. Yeah, we wouldn't Especially do it otherwise. Especially because we're bad liars. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm such a bad poker player. All right, let's get on to our reviews and booze. Okay. Here we have what looks like a house sparrow. He's uh, on a beach vacation. <laughs> very cute picture. Uh, usually with wildlife pictures, I find that people like them better tighter, though the context here is kind of important. It's nice that we can see the wave in the background. We could probably set it a little tighter, right? I kind of like it the way it was. Because now I don't know there's a wave behind him. Yeah, you're right. We just we can't tell. Okay. One minor point, I've said this before, but I like it when they're either perfectly in profile or turned towards you just a little bit. And here he's facing away just a little bit. It makes kind of makes all the difference. Uh, you don't quite engage the same, but it the lighting here is great. Great detail, good focus. I would like this picture with filter so it looks like deep and meaningful, like he's looking off into the distance. <laughs> yeah, maybe like, like a quote written up here about who life. Who am I? <laughs> Is it really all about seeds? <laughs> More birds. Wow. wow. What a beautiful owl Stephen portrait. Stephen Hunt. Uh, clean up a few of the artifacts. So you have almost a perfect black background. Might as well clean it up a little bit. I'm trying to figure out the lighting here. Uh, I assumed it was a a flash picture and that the flash just fell off in the background, but it doesn't seem to be. I don't think so, because there's some stuff next to, to the right of his head. Click on that. See that stuff? Yeah. I think that they made the background black. Let's cheat. Oh, no, that's just, oh, oh you think you, they, oh, you're right. That's probably artifacts of how they cut it out. No, look, there's. No, I don't know. There's stuff in there. How'd they do this? I'm just trying to cheat and see what's hidden, hidden in the background, but. Ooh. You can't see it. That's a great picture. I don't know why you're putting it through all of this. Just testing it. Um, but yeah, I, it's a fantastic picture. I don't think I would change a thing. He just looks ferocious. There's just perfect, infinite detail. My goodness. Yeah, you can see every detail is feathers. Yeah, it's beautiful. A fantastic picture. And you I love the way it's Steven. cut out on black. Yeah. This is a nice little cute kind of candid portrait. Uh, black and white is good. I and love the, the composition. Yeah. I love that it's candid. The one thing that I don't like is her expression. She looks like me after a few glasses of wine. Don't give wine to your babies. <laughs> wine, baby. Um, but I, I love the way you filled, filled the frame with her face. And yeah. The way it's cut into the head. Very nice. And I, I like the processing on it, too. With a kid, I mean, if you want to get a better expression, you just have to keep taking pictures, just shoot thousands and thousands of pictures. You could bribe them. You could give them candy. Yeah. That also or works motivation. on me. This looks like milkweed. I was going to say, it looks like some milkweed pods. Yeah. I like this nice soft lighting. Um, 
Yeah. And that is, I, I think, you know, I think how you would present this is I would like to see it in print alongside other similar items that were kind of at the same scene, maybe like a wider shot of the meadow. Or I think the lighting the water. could have made it like if it had been backlit. Yeah, I guess we're we're saying it, it needs pop, one pizzazz, of the something. Make yeah. it spicy. Make it spicy. Make it spicy. Oh wow! I don't know if this. I bet this is training. Uh, but what a beautiful action shot of this dog retrieving what looks like a pheasant. Uh, fantastic! I just love the motion that you've captured and the snow falling in the air. Just beautiful. That's a great shot. Yeah, it really is. Uh, perfect focus, it looks like. Nice and sharp. A D800 with so much, so much detail out of that sensor. Um, one five hundred. I don't think I'd change anything about the settings. I mean, that's a high ISO, but I don't see any traces of noise because it's, you know, it's been down res to the point where we can see it. You know, I might in Photoshop just clone this out. It's a little bit of a distraction, but can you think of any suggestions? No. Why mess with perfection? Yeah, right. Oh, oh what a great portrait. This is a beautiful picture. Yeah. My first thought is what to do, whether to reduce this negative space, but at the same time, it is He's like looking a into it. deep yeah. picture, and I don't mind the extra negative space. I love this picture. I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I almost wonder if we might keep the same amount of negative space, but just move him into the corner a little bit, so it's not quite so dead center, and he's kind of actually make more try negative it. space over here. You try it. Well, you I, show us. I don't us know how to do that. Just easily. I mean, I could crop it. This is. Oh, you decapitated him. <laughs> oh, I like that. A little bit closer. Yeah, I wouldn't even mind just making more black over here. You could certainly do that easily enough. Um, but I love the moody lighting. It looks like a single light shot, like a, something around like a beauty dish. Uh, very nice. I, I wouldn't hate a little more outline of his chin there. It's so important with guys to kind of show that chin. But he's not a guy. He's a boy. He's so cute. <laughs> he looks so sweet. Look at the expression in his eyes. Yeah. It actually looks like there's a uh, watermark there. Oh. J. Stanley Photography. Thanks for not blowing us away with your watermark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was like... Oh, that was a little too That subtle. was like a treasure hunt. All right. Okay. It is bald eagle season here in the Northeast, and we've been out chasing them ourselves. Um, fantastic light. Great find. It seems like you might have missed focus by just a hair. A smidgen? It, oh, you know what? I had this experience the other day. I was trying to take a picture of a bald eagle through some branches, and it kept focusing on the branches. And I had to put it in manual. And even then, it was really difficult, especially at 403 millimeters. That's really difficult. Yeah, so I'm going to guess what happened is it, it probably grabbed focus on his back. Yeah. Because it's so much bigger of a target and his eyes are behind it. Yeah, well, yeah, when you're that far away, it's so hard to focus on the right spot. You just have to take a ton of pictures. Yeah, just keep refocusing, shooting again. Um, though it looks like these leaves, these branches behind him might actually be sharper. Oh, yeah. So it looks like you back focus a little bit. Not front focus like I originally thought. Um, Can we sharpen it a little bit? Yeah. I mean, try it. It never hurts to just try. You know, I, I do think it looks, the main subject here looks better with some sharpening. In Chapter 8, Editing Wildlife Photos, you'll learn how to completely remove um, the noise, the background here. Yeah. It's so easy. You just Look at his pose, though. That's beautiful. It. So, oh, you know what? Someone uh, taught me in one of our comments that you press, oh, you don't have to put the exposure down. And then it will show you where you're painting. It might have been like Control O or something like that. Oh, I'm in that field there. Oh. Ah, okay. See? I, I did not know that. Thank you, reader. This is one of those things I tend to bring into Photoshop, so I, I haven't worked with it. But uh, Well, you know what, Tony? We're saying we're teachers, so maybe we need to practice. You're right. 
So now that I've selected that, I can just crank up the noise reduction, just eliminate the detail. Uh, Wait, but um, now you just did that to the eagle. He looks like caca. That didn't help. Uh, you're right. I, I know. I only meant to apply it to the mask, but look, there's a lot of pressure. This is done live. This is done live, Like guys. I said, I always do the stuff in Photoshop. You know what, guys? Quite frankly, I'm okay. tired of you judging me. <laughs> I'm only one woman, and I work pretty hard. Anyway, it's possible in either <laughs> Lightroom or Photoshop. <laughs> the cameraman's off there. Uh, you know what? Let's just turn this into a therapy session. I've got some stuff i got to get off my chest. <laughs> well, I'm concerned about this back focusing. I think I actually want you to do some tests on your camera. Um, if you check the latest edition of Stunning Digital Photography, there's a video in Chapter 5 that shows you how to test your camera for your lens for whether or not you might require micro adjustments because this is back focused. Again, first step, it's take easy, dozens of pictures. It's easy to back focus though. It could. It, it, it can happen even if you're It's more likely that it's not the lens. It's just right. really hard. That's why we practice. It's something to test though. Um, Actually, speaking of back focusing here, I think they focused on the far eye. And you always want to focus on the near eye. So select a single focus point and then focus on the near eye. And take lots of pictures because your camera's going to screw up some. You're going to move in and out. The subject's going to move. Uh, but focusing aside, it's not even visible at this point. Uh, beautiful picture, wait, right? I love the colors here. Wait, I have some problems. Zoom in on her face. Her eyes are over-processed. You don't think so? Uh, I'm sorry, I was just wondering, did I start Captivate properly? What, are you ta what do you mean? What are you saying to me? I don't know, just, I wish there was a way to tell whether Captivate was running. You can't tell. No, it would just stop, it would just stop recording if you try to click on it. I know! I just want to see if it's recording and reassure myself that I'm not How doing this for nothing. How could you do this to us? Oh, you, you don't have it on your oh, wait, there it is. Yeah, it's recording. Okay, it is recording. Forget that. That Sorry. was a snafu. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I, the, but no, that didn't occur to me about our eyes. I think they look fine, but... Well, we can agree to disagree. I would say, you know... But you think they brought them out, and you think it's too much? Yeah. That's just one lady's opinion, you know? This is an art. There's no right and wrong. Um, but I like it. The vignetting is really nice. I like... Nice pose, nice... I like the nice blurred background. Three quarters there, yeah. Great background. Doesn't distract from the subject too much, partially because of her bright makeup, and the makeup matches the scarf there, which I think ties it together really. I think it's a great portrait. Very nice. Okay. Tell oh. you want to tone down the processing a little. This He's a handsome. Handsome fellow. That's what I was going to say. It's like it's a hot day. He's panting a little bit. Wow. Uh, great detail. He looks judgmental. Nailed the focus. Plenty of depth of field. Uh, we're, we're sick of him judging us and looking at us like Quite, that. A little bit. <laughs> I like it. I, lo I love the shot. Usually they're asleep at the zoo, so this is a nice change. Yeah. Might consider a crop. Eh, that's what you're going for. I would blur the background. Go back to that. You just select the background and blur it. You want to try it? And we'll see oh, if I'm man. wrong. I don't know how to do this in Lightroom. I Yeah, you just, okay, click that. And now select it. Look at this. Ooh. It's a little rough. but And now um, put the sharpness down. I don't think that's going to make it blur, though, you think? Mm, do the clarity down. Is there something I'm missing? I don't know. See if that makes any difference. All right, I gotta learn Photoshop. Or Wait, Lightroom what are you better. doing with it? Why isn't it making the changes? Let me just see something real quick. Let me just see. Oh, it made it dark. See the selected area? 
That's why it doesn't Here. look right. Let's un just need, undo it. Yeah, undo, because some things that weren't supposed to happen happened. Oh, oh I forgot so to adjust see? the exposure. Yes. Yeah, okay. Here, let's try it again. Okay, let's just do the real, the real quick thing. So you wanted sharpness and clarity sure. down? It didn't really blur it, did it? No, I don't know of a good way to... In, in Photoshop, there's a lens blur tool that just works spectacularly. It really does, but every time I suggest Photoshop, people get so mad at me and tell me to talk about Lightroom. Let's just move on. I, I'm just going to do it quick. We're committing to this. Yeah. Photoshop is loading. All right. How much is Lightroom? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's like $120. We have it through the Creative Cloud. So we, we pay like a monthly fee to use it. Wow. Okay. So. Okay. So now we're in our world. Why don't we just do this whole thing in Photoshop? It's not easy to browse through stuff with it. We, have you used Bridge before in Photoshop? Because it's horrible, and that's why I go between Lightroom and Photoshop. It's oh, so I forgot I can't press the Alt key. This is going terribly. Oh, no. If you press the Alt key while you're using the screen capture software we use, it freezes everything. Yeah, and now look at my cursor. This well, is a mess. This is just horrible. Let's quit. Okay. So now I have to click that and not press the Alt key like I normally do. It's really hard to not use keyboard shortcuts once you know them, right? Yeah. Tony, you make an excellent amaretto in SoCo. Thanks. Oh, didn't mean to do that. You're the, you're the mixologist of my dreams. <laughs> okay, so I have the background very roughly selected. And now I can go in and blur. do a lens blur. And it takes it off camera, of course. This is, wow. All right. So you can see, oh, look how nicely it blurs it for us. Oh my goodness. This is why I do everything in Photoshop. That's a little too much. Yeah, I just wanted to do it really rough to demonstrate. You can see I haven't done a great job of yeah. selecting stuff either. But it'll put it as a mask, and then you can make it so that stuff closer is less blurred than stuff that's farther away by applying gradients and stuff to it. Anyway. It isolates your subject, and it would look better if we put more time into it. Yeah. Okay, you know what? That was crazy. <laughs> What's right. this? Level that horizon. Is this um, England? <laughs> no. Yes, it is. This is uh, Rio de Janeiro. I'm kidding. Cool that we have, like, Big Ben back there. I didn't know England got, like, it looks like a nightclub now. Look at all those lights. <laughs> Whoa, England, you really stepped your game up. You know, this is, it's a matter of opinion, but a lot of night photos, the histogram looks like this, where everything is in that, like, bottom eighth. Yeah. And your camera will often just expose it like that. But I, I like to see a little more detail. And especially if you want to make a print. If you made a print like this, you wouldn't even be able to see the print. I like to bump up the exposure a little bit. I know that about you. Yeah. Justin, have you seen England lately? Come check this out. <laughs> England freaked out. Look England at that place. Out. A lot of neon. That. Wow. Yeah, that is a lot of... And that's a lot of England. That puts Tokyo to shame. I know. Maybe the saturation is just up? No, that's England now. That's England now. Okay. 
good night shot, nice and steady. I would just say, especially as you're taking the exposure, uh, go ahead and watch that histogram. We lost the metadata again. We would have known how long their exposure was for, but you want to keep a low ISO and do a longer exposure. And yeah. if you're like me, it's painful. And those, star those plane trails are easy to remove. I can see, it looks like stars are moving, so it must have been like a minute exposure. Wow, those stars are real fast. Uh-oh. It's like the kid's first time out on skates. That's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? You know... The word me, unplug is really the focus, front and center. Yeah, it is. But also, she's looking down, and so your eyes are drawn to the skates, but then the skates are kind of cut off. Um, and I think if this is about a kid's skating, uh, you want the skates to be in there. It's an important part of the story. And also, I'm, this is terribly distracting. You might just wait until you have a better background on it. Wait until you have a better background. And if this is your child and you feel like this is the moment, well, I mean, if it's for your family photos, I just keep in everything. I would keep in unplug in the car. But if not, I would change or blur the background a little bit, redirect people's attention. I also feel like this is a good candidate for black and white. Just because the colors in the background were so bright. And yeah, it was you're kind right. Of distracting. Tony, you know what? Sometimes you're right. This is one of those times. But so my eyes just immediately go to the unplug. Well, that's advertising. Welcome to America, Tony. <laughs> What's this little... Is this a hydrangea? Oh, is it? I love hydrangea. Um, I, I think there's way too much in here that's not hydrangea, though. Don't you think if they want it to be a hydrangea, we should just make it about the hydrangea? Bless you. Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> I tried to cover my mic, but that was just, woo, that was crazy. <laughs> um, but this is a good time for a macro lens. These flowers are just teeny tiny, and if you want a picture of that, fill the frame. Okay, well. Wow. This is a cool shot. Something about it looks miniature. Is it a toy? It's a toy. It's, this person tricked us. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You sneaky. No tricking us. No trickery. <laughs> This is a no trickery zone. What do you think, Justin? It's a toy. There's no way that's like a toy ship lens. Right? No, like, no. They have to be far away, right? I just don't. I, yeah, I think it's the chunkiness of the the snow that gives it away. But actually, yeah, I didn't immediately true. know. I don't know that they're trying to trick us. But. No, they are. I think it's a toy. Yeah. I know this person. They're a real trickster. Look at the grass and stuff. The grass looks like. The grass, grass looks stuff. real. Yeah. Wow, this is a real sneaky picture. I love it. <laughs> Tony, I wouldn't change a thing. This is great. Uh-oh, old saxy lips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think this is a great uh, live music shot. Raise the shadows. Let's see what's going on in there. All right. Look at that. Look at the texture. Yeah, I was okay with the original, too, but... I, I like that. a shirt. It has Western details. Better here, better He's here. Yeah, I, I like it both ways. I can do either way, but I don't know if the shot needs Do you hear that, everybody? It. Tony likes it both ways. <laughs> not making that drink for you again. You're in trouble. <laughs> well, I'll applaud the composition. You really filled the frame with the interesting part. You included enough of the sacks that we know what's going on. I, the crop on his hand is a little awkward. I wouldn't mind seeing a little more of his hand, but, you know, there's not... A lot of times we see these shots and they're way too wide angle. This is nice and tight. Following the rule of thirds with his eyes and face up there. Nicely done. Great contrast. Great processing. Oh. Now, first look at this picture. And you can what? see just the nice contrast. His face is nice and bright. Look at the histogram and you see it fills the whole thing. Yeah, what? That's how a black and white picture is done. This picture is just washed out. And you can see you don't have to look at the picture. Just look at the histogram. These two sections right here completely Not empty. enough whites. Let's get them up. Yeah. So Let's do it. We just got to drag those whites up there. Bam, like right away. Much better. And not as a little better on the screen, but definitely, definitely better in a print. What do you think the story is with this picture? Uh, I imagine a photographer yelled at them to hug. I imagine they're at the funeral of someone they hate. <laughs> <laughs> I love making Justin laugh. That's like my goal every day. 
Um, this little corner here is bugging me. Uh, I, I think it's a great moment, other than the uh, whites being a little low. Bye. Bye, Justin. Kind of grabs himself, but yeah. I'll oh, okay. okay. Um, and I like the unusual kind of panoramic crop. I like that. But great I expression. I feel Good constricted moment. by it. <laughs> you know my opinions. Oh. We did post. Oh, Muhammad Alamir. Wow. This landscape here is just amazing. They're crazy good. It's so rare that you get good wildlife photos that are good in some other way besides being a wildlife photo. This is awesome. Yeah, this is really one of the best owl shots I've ever seen. Oh, you win, sir. You win. That's beautiful. How did this happen? Like, he was Holy hiking crap. up a mountain and, and saw this? Like, what? I, I don't even know Muhammad, but this is a spectacular. But this picture. doesn't have his watermark. Is this this must be the guy we know? Could it but, be? No, yeah, it must be him. Maybe he's got like a different signature for wildlife. He is sophisticated. Um, Tony, I I can't critique this. This is so wonderful. Maybe remove the noise in the background. That might be the one thing. Chapter eight, editing wildlife videos. Chapter we tried to eight. demonstrate it earlier. It didn't go so well. It didn't, but, no. But uh, chapter eight, we say it over and over again. Yeah, I mean, it's not worth it for every wildlife photo, but this photo belongs in your portfolio. It should be made into a spectacularly large print. Um, it should be sold in galleries worldwide. It should be revered for centuries. Yeah. Let's keep, no, don't, no. I just, the nope. balance is bothering me a no. little bit. See. You stop. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. No. I'm trying to balance the negative space here below him and above him, and I'm trying to balance the negative space to the left of the sun, focal point one here, and this owl's face, focal point two. And so there it feels a tiny bit unbalanced. Here, to me, it feels a little bit better. You know what? I liked it before. You can't math everything. Hmm. You be the judge. <laughs> oh, I will. What's the spectacular location? Mm-hmm. You show them, Tony. You got a level. Uh, especially in a panorama. Just really critical to be level. Uh, but beautiful, beautiful That's shot. That's so Fantastic beautiful. Fantastic lighting. Wonderful location. This the looks colors. Like, this looks like a crater to me, don't you think? Oh, this is a crater. This looks like heaven. I don't know where this is. Me either. We may never experience this. Let's go there. Let's go. Um, but otherwise, I think all your settings are right. It looks beautiful. Great timing. This little thing down here is bugging me a little bit. Oh, no. Why, why would you pick there? Look. Okay. Let's try that. All right. Well, that was a terrible job of cloning. I'll, <laughs> but you okay. get the idea. This is the sexiest penguin I've ever seen. He's like a model penguin. He's got it going on. In a penguin nightclub. <laughs> right? Like there's like purple lights and blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Justin, before you go, you've got to check out the sexy penguin. I saw this. You did? Yeah. You saw the sexy penguin? It's in the Dubai Mall or something. The Dubai Mall? I swear. I, I'm trying to get Chelsea to go to Dubai. I, it's not hard. I'll this go there. This is what their malls look like, Chelsea. Their yeah. malls have just the best looking penguins I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome photo. Though. Yeah, that's really good. And look at the other penguins jealous in the background. It's like, he gets all the tension. <laughs> I, I feel like... Bye again. Bye. See ya. Oh, man. I don't know. There's something bumping me about the white balance, but I'm not exactly what? sure how no, to fix it. No, but it's like surreal. Yeah, I guess that's it. It's just surreal. But I like... I mean, isn't it surreal? They have penguins in their mall. Is that even right? People, not right. It's not right. <laughs> it's not right. Great shot. Uh, this terrifies me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. This is a character from a movie. He's got a gold lame ascot, which I didn't even know that existed. And he's got a twisty mustache. And those are two things that make me... And eyeliner. Um, for those that don't know, the movie <laughs> Kate Fear was based on Chelsea's childhood. <laughs> and instead of uh, Robert De Niro, it was actually 
a man with a handlebar mustache. So anybody with a handlebar mustache is going to kind of set Chelsea off. I'm she has some bad experiences. His hat's too thick in the brim. All it. Come on. Yeah, she has a. What is that? Toothpaste. He has toothpaste in his beard. I'll say since I grew facial hair. Oh, what's this it's to kind the of left? A Let's scoot it. Scoot it to the. Le- what's that in his hair? Deviousness. I That's feel what. like we're on a tangent, though. We're nitpicking this poor you know guy's what? beard. We could be so on a tangent. About the photo. Well, the tangent's wonderful, and the photo's wonderful, and this man is too beautiful for his own good. All right, so we nailed the focus. It's on the close eye. Use the clone tool and take that stuff out of his beard. Because that's just too much for me. You want me to unhandlebar it? No. No, you leave that. He's bad with makeup, and that's why men shouldn't wear makeup. Let's go. I think he is wearing eyeliner. He is wearing eyeliner. That's all right. He's, he's doing something. It's not a Ren fair or something. A Ren fair? He's, he's wearing a, a LeMay ascot. This is some crazy place I need to go to. <laughs> it's in the wrong era. I think he's he's just like a, a mid-century <laughs> rapist. What? I don't know what you just said, but I liked it. Let's make you another drink. You get crazy. Oh, Mike Serco. Right. Canada Goose uh, feels a little dark to me. Here, people, they don't like the Canada Goose because they poop on the lawn. So... It's a creature that's difficult to appreciate. Is it a Canada goose or is that might be different? Because there are lots of variations of the Canada goose. It's what what's species. different about them? I, well, I feel like that might be. It's probably a Canada. Don't goose. they all just poop on ones? So this would be quite a boring picture if we didn't have this nice reflection here. You're right. It, the reflection makes it. Um, but we do need the subject to be well exposed. Uh, it's a bit dark. Yeah. And as I'm cranking it up a little bit, I think it's it's. Well, we don't have the better. raw file. Yeah, that's the but issue, Mike. You you could do this. You have the raw file. Just you, you can see bump this, up the, the noise is coming out here. Yeah, yeah. let's bring up a little bit. Check that Instagram. Yeah, you do that. Oh, what am I looking at? Two boars just eye to eye duking it out. <laughs> That's it's, intense. Let's put down the highlights because I it, it that that's bugging me too, and I don't think this is going to go well. I think. Because looking gonna at the history, it's all lost. It's just yeah. overexposed. Oh, you know, that's actually, it's actually doing a pretty good job with it. It's doing good. Let's go, let's put the clarity the up. Clarity up. Yeah, because you see that? Yeah, you're right. That I brings know. up the texture and the know. fur. I've been finding I've been right. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Nicely done. Well, this is confusing. She's spooky, but she's, oh. No, it's funny. This reminds me of the current season of American Horror Story. <laughs> this is a cool picture. Let's make it black and white. Third annual Dia de los Muertos. I'm pretty sure they've been doing it for more than three years. <laughs> That's a good point. Let's do it black. <gasps> I, I don't know. Yes. Now put the highlights down. I'm just doing what you say here. I know but... you are. And, and now put the exposure a little bit up. Oh, Chelsea, you are, you got it, girl. That's me. All right. You like um, it colorful. I love Look. the colors in it. I, I don't like the t-shirt in it. Yeah, but the t-shirt tells the story. Like, I'm like, why is she so happy? And then I realize she's at a festival or something. Okay. Well... All right, so we have two different takes on the same picture. For me, it's all about the color and makeup and her expression. And I like the photo, perfect focus, focus. everything's technically just great about it. For me, it's just about like real art, so that's what I do, but. <laughs> all right, so. Architectural photography. Yeah, this, this photo is about geometry, lines and shapes, and That's they funny. added the sun in for a focal point, which is, because without the sun, this picture would be nothing, and we'd skip right past it, but with the sun, you have a focal point, your eye goes right there, they carefully positioned it with a rule of thirds, and I love the use of lines here. Do you think you like the buildings, do you think the whole thing could be brighter? Are you happy I do, exposure? and I would, I would play with black and white, because maybe the blue sky is good, or maybe it's distracting from the lines of the architecture. And we just don't know. We just don't know until we know. So I raised the whole exposure, but then brought the blues back down. 
Uh, well, I don't know. What do you think? Before, after. Your after is interesting. Um, this thing is bothering me a little bit. I would definitely clone that out. You would. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Well, this is why I endorse Photoshop. Okay, that was a rough job, but I just removed that element. Uh, okay. else I that. Oh, oh, You're simplifying the composition. I think yeah, that so last move was a bad choice, but I'm going to respect your opinion. You like it better there? Well, I don't like the statue, but I do like the doorway. Because it, it adds so a rounded like line to an otherwise square composition. You're right. It's better with the doorway, but without the statue. Yes. And I think we liked it brighter. Okay. <gasps> what happened? <laughs> I know. Oh. This is such a great story. But his parents left, and I was trying to creep out of a scary window. This is a great picture. Let's not even change a thing. No, there's nothing to change. But yeah, great storytelling in this picture. It just catches the eye immediately. Oh, it does. Fantastic work. Horse racing picture. They decided to go pretty high on the saturation. I think a little bit too high for my taste. Because look at that tree in the background. There's all sorts of crazy things going on in the sky. is oversaturated, so the textures in the sky are a bit unnatural. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to undo the processing, but I do think it's a great action shot. Yeah, I like the shot. Just the processing is a bit... It needs to be a little understated. Yeah. We saw the strawberry version of this last week, right? <laughs> yeah, and this is a fantastic picture. Um, the exposure bugs me right away because we want these, the highlights here, to be bright white. All right, you show them. I will. You show them, and you show them. Huh. Yeah, so we, on the histogram here, we want some of it blown out. It's okay to have these just completely blown out. Just watch that exposure, and oh, that revealed a little bit of their <gasps> photoshopping there. Uh... <laughs> I know, those selections are hard. <laughs> Masking is, they, they pay people just to mask stuff like this off. It's hard. Um, that's not the best job of masking. That job there are people boring. whose job is just to mask. So That's so boring. Yeah, it's pretty boring. Um, but we get what you're going for here, and I think it's wonderful otherwise. I don't know what else is in the background there. Um, but I would just go ahead and, and uh, reshoot it, try to get a better in-camera, because you're not going to be able to fix this with post-processing in any sort of easy way. See, I think it works better with the strawberry, because the strawberry dropped in water is like, ooh, cool, refreshing. But when I think of a pepper, I think spicy, like there should be a flame around it or something. All right, so throw some peppers in a fire. Throw peppers Take in the fire. Fire photography. Um, so before it looks a little muddy to me, and I definitely think the brighter after works a little better, conveys the message a little clearer. This is interesting. I love the mirror and the kind of two sides to this. Black and white. I was thinking that too, because it has that street photography feel. Um, right, also, there's a lot up here that mm -hmm. doesn't seem important to me. Okay. Yeah. It's only north of my hero. Um, and yeah, just looking at the histogram, you can see there's almost nothing on the right side here. And the brightest part is this. So it kind of steals the attention away from everything else. So we're just going to raise it up. I want to add a little contrast. I'm going to drop those blacks some. So what do you think? Before color? Well, I after. like the after in black and white, but I raised the shadows a little bit because the detail on his hair was lost. More shadows. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Um, See, just a little bit. Look what we did. You know, I don't necessarily mind the color, except that the brightest thing color color wise is this top here. Can you and turn down the teals? Oh, yeah, you're saying just... You just do that. Uh, 
and it's not completely giving up. It's not t- completely teal. All right, so you might be able to get away with just dropping the uh, blues and teals, so do some aquas a little bit. Let's see. All right, so I think we actually can work with the color there. Black and white is also a good option for this. But interesting shot, mostly because of this mirror here. Kind of get two sides of that. That's cool. I, I feel like this needs something else. It has beautiful lighting. Yeah, the lighting is beautiful. But it lacks a focal point. You gotta level up. Always gotta level, right? I mean, if you're too north. <laughs> You got the horizon in there, you got to straighten it out. Maybe it's about the lines and shapes. If you put it in black and white, you would see if that was the case. There you go. I do actually feel like it works better in black and white. I do too. Because now the focal point is <clears throat> the different lines, the vertical and horizontal lines. Uh, we do see this, um, like piers used frequently, especially under the piers. And there are a couple of things you can do to make it more interesting. One is to wait for a focal point, like a, a sailboat We're going by here, or there were like a, mm-hmm. a llama floating by. Oh, a, llama, swimming, a swimming llama. A swimming llama. I feel like there's a lot of peer pressure lately. <sighs> I deal with this every day. You see what I got? <laughs> you see what I got? Just saying. Um, Another cool thing you can do is slap on a neutral density filter, like an 8x filter, and make this a 5, 10 second exposure. Blur that water a little bit. Okay. It's a cool effect. That ain't a bad idea. Oh, the old fist under the chin move. <laughs> I learned that. I did that. Um, yeah, it is a very traditional Pose. We gotta bring up the shadows because his hair is disappearing into the distance. Yeah, this guy he needs a hair light to separate him from the background. Just I have dark hair does. too. Check chapter six. Yeah, a little hair light would separate him good. And what is that? What? Maybe if he turned his hand a little bit or faced the back of his hand instead he, of the front he of his hand. Face the back of the hand of the camera because yeah. the fingers are so, you know intricate that it kind of steals the attention. There's a lot going on in those fingers. Tap. And, um, yeah, unless that's an important part of the story, I, I would probably remove that. Well, I like this picture. I like it too, yeah. He's a handsome gentleman. I think it was a little much with the saturation on this. Uh, I don't... I feel like they bumped up the saturation, right? Yeah. But I don't think that it needs it. Um, it's just a beautiful photo. Great time of day. Beautiful landscape. You got the moon in there. I did. Good one. It seems like I, I can't see the metadata, but it seems like something. Uh, an HDR shot would have been good. Yeah, because with HDR, you could have smoothed out the shadows a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, good. yeah. Signets. Yeah. Oh, look at that one on the mom's back. He's getting like oh, a ride. Oh, yeah. That lazy oh, bastard. Yeah. That's, That's been like, This picture is wonderful. Yeah, it really it's is. It's really, really cute. Um, I want to see some whites in there, though, because this is a white subject. Your camera's going to underexpose it. I want to see it. whites, but I want to see a little bit of her eyes. Let's bring up those shadows. I know I feel like a broken record, but it seems important. Yeah, so don't be afraid if you have a white subject to make it white, like all the way to the right white. All the way to the right white. Um, but I love the, the crop on this and the reflections are just beautiful. And this would be a loss because everybody's looking away except that the mom here turned her head She's towards the camera. Them. Yeah. So sweet. Beautiful. Beautiful shot. Great, great shot. Oh. Oh, and what are the odds? Is, this... Is it the same person? I don't know. So then the odds aren't that crazy. <laughs> well, one thing is that you can see if you move to the left, that there's like blue and then, no, within the picture, the left of the frame. 
Do you see how it's gray over there? It looks yeah. very unnatural. I think they did some spot color. Oh, see? yeah, you're saying they like crank the blue or so. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is an example. They, they did spot color techniques and the spot color. It's just you can see here. Yeah, so we gotta blend it. Just watch the processing. I, I don't know what the but picture that looks thing's like originally. So cute. I just want to cuddle. Yeah. I want to cuddle. But this it. is adorable. You got perfect oh, so focus, cute. nice and sharp. I love all the water droplets. And uh, these are mean, mean animals, but they are so cute as babies. <laughs> Oh my oh, gosh, speaking of mean shot. animals that are cute as babies. <laughs> zoom in, I want to see that cute baby. Oh, so, Such a nice moment. Yeah, this is a wonderful shot. Is anything like crazy here? Yeah. We'll try it out. I'm just suggesting a little bit tight of a crop. I think it keeps the same story, keeps in context and location. Just zooms in a little bit more so you can see a little more detail on this. Adorable, adorable baby. Babies! That's the theme of the past two pictures. Just babies. One of the things that makes the shot nice is that the subjects here are the most colorful things. There's no bright, distracting colors in the background, which is so often a problem here, but the background is nice and muted. No distractions. Look at this family. I think there's a little on-camera flash going on here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that uh, flash bounce which, off. Which or something. chapter do we have that in in the book? Uh, chapter three, lighting. Chapter three, lighting. You but can see not... the pictures of how to bounce the flash, and the lighting is a lot softer. It's yeah. not a terrible example of on camera flash, except that there's a really harsh catch light in their eyes and makes them a little bit shiny, like the tips of their nose are shiny. If you bounce it, then it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like that. Yeah, on camera flash will always give you these like harsh specular highlights. There's not too much you can do about it. Uh, you could cake on some uh, powder as makeup, but I'm sure they didn't want to do that. Um, or otherwise, it's really nice. They're yeah, all close together. Yeah, exactly. Let them close, which They're is always hard attractive. to do. And they have great expressions. And yeah, for portraits, I don't necessarily recommend the like smile and say cheese, but for group photos, that's still the best thing. There's no big distractions in the background. That's nice. It's so an interesting and moody nice. shot. Beautiful rain. Yeah. The street light up here kind of illuminating the rain. I That's like it. Cool. He went out in the rain and uh, saw something really interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing that a little bit hotter. I Actually, I, don't, I think I wouldn't have minded seeing the light included a little bit. I, I like that it's a mystery. Where is that light coming from? <laughs> Everybody's looking at their phones. You know, before I saw the histogram, the first thing that bumped me was there's no black black in here. Like, look at the histogram. What happened here? So we need whites and we need blacks. That was too much, I think. Well, you know, it's difficult to try to fix processing that's already been done. Yeah. I, you know, I think they were going for, like, a vintage thing. Okay. Um, you're right. I'm not going to be able to fix that. I think they wanted it to look washed out. I think it's like a preset that they used. Yeah, it looks cool. I guess it's supposed to be I washed out. I love the out. picture. It tells a good story. Yeah. A sad tale. Um, because everybody's involved with their cell phones? Yes. Oh, you're going to black and white? I, I was just trying it out. It's I, I will always try it for street photography, just because it's the standard. I'm still bugged by the lack of contrast. But I know that's what they were going for. So as long as it's a conscious choice, you do you. You do you. This is, there's something sensual about this picture. <laughs> Liquor is working on you. <laughs> I'm easy. So they uh, found something beautiful and, and really zoomed in. I wouldn't mind seeing it zoomed in a little bit further or maybe more depth of field, maybe, just because so much of the picture is out of focus. Mm. Thoughts? Um, the subject is dead center. I might crop away the left part of the picture a bit. Nope, other side. I was thinking about cropping that side. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's tough to say. Flower pictures are so tough, and I, I think the number one thing you can do is just build a frame with your subject. And here we have 
just a lot of negative space. All right, so under the pier again, um, this is a common location because it's it's beautiful. All and that pier pressure. We, we. <laughs> You, One you more time. You try me. You love you're it. Trying. You love it. That's why I'm I married. I made that off. joke and you proposed. No. False. <laughs> so this is a great spot for a portrait and it's also a great adding a person to the picture is a great way to make the kind of under the pier shot more compelling because it adds a focal point. Uh, I like everything that's been done here. The exposure is perfect. You went ahead and let the background get blown out, but you had a, it looks like a little bit of fill flash, um, but not so much that it's distracting. Nice, seven eighths uh, head turn, great outfit, no distractions. I feel like it's just a, it's a great portrait. Nice backlighting made by the sun. I might bring up the exposure a little bit because the background seems better exposed than she does. You feel like she's dark? I feel like she's dark. I will say this is kind of a pervasive style to just let the background get blown out. But you're right. I like it a little brighter too. I wouldn't have thought of that, but now that I see the before, I definitely like it brighter. I'll bring up shadows too. Shadows too. Yeah, because then it gives a little detail in her hair and shirt <clears throat> and her eyes. Now she's blazing. I actually yeah. feel like this is a photo that could use a bit of that kind of vintage processing. Do it. Let's see. Nobody's going to stop you. I have so many of these little presets that I kind of filter through. Ooh. I'm just kind of randomly she looks nice and green. previewing. This is what I do all the time. I have all these presets loaded up. I just got them all free. And then I use them as for creative inspiration. I just kind of filter through them. I look at this preset here and move my cursor. And then when I see something that I think might work, I'll try it out. Yeah. And then usually I end up making some more tweaks to the processing. Sometimes I'll combine two of the presets to get something I really like. Um, but I feel like this is a great portrait. It just needed, it was very unprocessed before. It was very just like natural. And I think it could just use that little special pop. Special pop. It sounds like a really Special good pop, pop. popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a handful of pictures left. This is a candid moment. Um, this also actually feels a little dark, right? Or am I just? All right, so I'll crank that up a little bit. We have what I guess is mom watching the baby. The baby here is just having a great time because the baby hasn't had a lot of life experiences and just thinks this 50 cents worth of entertainment is wonderful. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? I actually, I think I'd be equally entertained. That looks amazing. <laughs> Wait till that baby drives a car. I mean, why? It's going to think that this carousel is crap. But for now, this baby is terribly entertained by 50 cents worth of entertainment. I think that's wonderful and caught a great moment. Um, we see her because she's wearing a bright dress, but her eyes are looking up here, so her eyes immediately go back to the kid. She's having a great time. This, I'm using this. Cool baby. Um, I feel like this can work a little bit better in, in black and white. So the pop of her red dress was nice too, so everything. Um, but otherwise, great crop, great composition, great focus, great settings. This is a really great picture. Yeah, this is too. Um, and By I just Frank love Frilly. the bright colors here, the lines. The I love the symmetry. bright colors here. But I love them first, dibs. So I, I don't think I would change a thing, but I love this photo. Okay. Well, you said it. You also called dibs on some things I didn't think you called dibs on. This is sad. I don't like it. Makes me scared. Would you check that camera and see if it's running? Sure. I almost didn't get my mic back. It's not. Yeah, fire it up. There you go. How long has it been like that? I don't know. 
this picture is scary to me. It's about something sad. But yeah. it's good. What the heck happened? This. Is I this, don't know. Is it just a fireman? Zoom in up by his head again. What's, is that their watermark? Subtle. Maybe. This is scary, and I like it. It's a great picture. I don't have anything to do to it. Do you? No. I, I like I like the inclusion of the reflection. It works really well. Ooh. Yeah, I, I love the lighting on this. Just gorgeous. And and what a perfect way to capture this marketplace. Really? It's just really? it's just filled with details, but at the same time we take it all in and there's no particular distraction. No, it's nice. Oh. Um, I love that you can see the light. Wow. I, I don't know. I have no suggestions. I for this. I think you, I think it's absolutely a fantastic way to capture that market. Nicely done. Oh. Nice horsey portrait beautiful here. Beautiful horse. Reminds me of my horse, Coco. So cute. Yeah, it looks good to me. Great use of front lighting here. That's what allows it to be nice and bright and shows off that sheen in the fur. Uh, you know, if you did this on an overcast day, it would just be really flat. But you have hard sunlight here. really just makes it look so shiny. Wow. A seagull has never looked so good. <laughs> uh, I think that's in Photoshop. Photo. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, I even recognize the renders that Photoshop makes. But that's okay. It works. You yeah. did something. We're yeah. proud of you. It's very pretty. We accept you. I wouldn't change it. They got it. I would just add some words here about footsteps and beaches and stuff. I would add words by Jack Handy. Any particular words? All sorts of ones. This is nice. This reminds me of Chris Greenwood. Do you think it's him? I, I think he watermarks his pictures, but my first thought was Chris Greenwood too, so sorry if we're confusing with somebody else. There's another um, Chris Greenwood. It does look like an HDR landscape shot. We have a little bit of uh, fringing here. You can see just right there. Just getting a little hot. So be careful with that. It's beautiful. Uh, though. Careful processing can undo that. But yeah, a fantastic shot. I love this kind of winding road through here. Just mm. beautiful lighting and beautiful timing. Yeah. Other than careful, being careful of the uh, HDR processing, I wouldn't change a thing. No, Nailed I wouldn't. It. Hey, yeah. They did, didn't they? That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Submit your own pictures at sdpcommunity.com using the pictures menu, assuming you bought stunning digital photography or our video training series. It's affordable. <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.